Well, here we are. Good afternoon to those of you who are in the Zoom with me today and those of you who are joining on Facebook. Um, this is, we're going into day, day two of um, the waiting room. We launched it last night at 6 p.m. and we're going with the Jewish dates, sundown to sundown. And so day one really is until 6 p.m. today. And so here we are in, into day one, and we are grateful for this vision. We are grateful for how the Holy Spirit has allowed us to capture God's heart in this way, because God is multifaceted. God is creator. God is uh, the one who's painted all that you see in nature. And I, I can't imagine us living less than um, flowing out of creativity. And so today I am inviting you to come into this space. If you don't have pen and paper watching or in the Zoom room, you may need to turn your camera off and go find yourself pen and paper, crayons maybe, because we're gonna allow, we're gonna encourage you to flow creatively. So um, if you need to, to move, turn your camera off a second and do that. If you are watching on Facebook, we invite you to grab pen, paper. You want to take notes. Um, thankfully, because we are on Facebook, we are able to come back to this recording and watch it several times. And I'm so glad I could download it, upload it to my face, uh, my YouTube channel. So if you haven't gone there yet, Sanja Valentine Ministries YouTube channel, check it out, subscribe and touch the bell. So every time there's a new video, you can see it, you know about it. Um, so yeah, um, we are grateful that, wow, um, the Lord has trusted us with this endeavor saying, call my people, into um, the grace that each carries regarding creativity. Call them out, call them in, call them up, call them forth. And so that's the assignment on our lives. And um, I, I really want to um, encourage you to share this with somebody. So do me a favor, if you are on uh, Facebook, go ahead and share this. Um, if you are here in the Zoom room and you have the flyer, um, I'm going to invite you to um, share that. Um, but find a way to share this. Find a way to let other people come on board. Because today is about manifesting creativity. Today is about calling forth what's in you. And some of us are going to find out that there's more in us than we have acknowledged. I was getting ready and I was thinking, I, was must, I must have been about nine or so, and my mother offered to send me to do piano lessons. Hmm. Without going to even the first lesson, my response was this, it's too hard. <sighs> How do I regret 50 years later? Because now at 59, I'm trying to learn the piano when I could have learned it 50 years ago if I didn't put up this block. So we're gonna figure out today how to be unblocked, how to be unleashed. Yeah, how to tap into uh, the creativity that may be dormant, that may be lying dormant within you. So I, I really truly invite you to um, step into this room, whether you're in uh, the Zoom room or you're watching um, on Facebook, step in, step in. This, this is not for you to be just like watching. I don't want you to watch me. I know I'm beautiful. Thank you very much for the compliment. But I want you to hear what I'm saying. And I want you to be provoked to pursue destiny. So let us pray. Father, we thank you that you made us, you created us, and Lord God, you have designed each of us uniquely. And we want to tap into the uniqueness of our divine design. Hallelujah. We want to become more aware of how you have wired us, how you have crafted us. We want to be able to release the imprint of who you have made us to be into the earth. 
Father, we want the colors, ah oh God, as we watch spring come forth and the colors of nature bloom, God, we want to bloom. We want to bloom. We want to bloom, God. We want to show your glory. We want to transmit your glory, Father. So today, as we gather this in this virtual space, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, as you did on the day of creation or in the days of creation, as you hovered over the blackness, the inky blackness, the soupy nothingness according to the message, as you hovered over what was void and formless. Woo, Holy Spirit, as you hovered, mm, the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord spoke, let there be, and there was. We ask you to hover over each of us today. And we ask you to speak. We ask you to let your voice be heard above the, the, the noise of the enemy, the chatter of the enemy, the lies of the enemy. Let your voice be heard in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, Sister Helen, would you read for us um, from the book of Genesis? And I referenced that in my prayer just now. The book of Genesis chapter one is all about God <laughs> saying, let there be when there was nothing. It's all about God speaking light into the darkness. It's all about God shifting what was and saying it's gonna be what I have determined it to be. That's what today's session is about. So we're gonna read verses 26, 27, and 28 from Genesis chapter one. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and put it in the comment section. Let us engage, touch the like button, touch the heart button, because I'm watching you too on Facebook. So don't be <laughs> passive there. Let me know you are receiving out there on Facebook as well. Go on, Sister Helen. Then God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make a man, make man in our own image, according to our likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, granting them certain authority and said to them, be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth and subjugate it, putting it under your power and rule over, dominate the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. Everything God created, including man, is to reproduce. We were, we were designed to reproduce. We were created to make and bring forth after our kind. And so I believe when we flow in creativity, we are literally allowing the replication, the reproduction of ourselves in the earth realm. So we're going to be provoked today to do just that. So after our prayer time this morning, which was really rich, if you miss being in the prayer room this morning, don't miss tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Eastern time, you want to wake up, wash the face, you know, drink some coffee. That's going to help you wake up, but wake up. Wake up and come into the room because it is worth coming into this room. Hallelujah. Um, I went walking because I thought I better get some energy, right? And how many of you know that movements create energy? And so um, I went walking and I went walking down from the street from my house. And at the end of the street, there is a lake. Uh, the lake is really a big lake. It's, it's, it's Lake Toho, shortened version. I ain't gonna try to pronounce the, the, the Spanish name. Um, I think it's Toho Capilla or whatever. But anyway, <laughs> it's the shortened version is Lake Toho. But the same lake is also the place where I go a lot of times, which is downtown Kissimmee, and they've done a beautiful job at creating it, you know, just for family and for delight. Honestly, I 
I put on my beach chair sometimes and I have my books on my journal and I'm, I'm, I'm working near the waters because it inspires me. So anyway, walk down to the lake. First of all, I got to tell you, I've walked down there many times. And for the first time today, I saw an alligator that was out of the water. <laughs> Thankfully, as I was approaching the lake, it ran back in and it was a tiny one because I promise you, I think I would have been like, oh, it was a huge one, but it was a small one. But there was also um, also uh, uh, I think it's called a caterpillar, a book uh, is Baco, Baco, Baco. I think that's that's what it is. Matter of fact, I took a picture and I want to share the picture with you. So, am I right? This is what you call a Baco, right? Yes. Can you see my, my screen? Yes. yes. It is. Okay. Yes, we can. All right. Yeah. I believe um, so. Yeah. So what is this called? It's called a Baco, right? Am I right about that? Help me somebody. Nobody knows. I think so. I do think so. Yes, it is. Yes. I think so, right? And and you could see where it is, because what happens, right? Over time, especially with no rain and, and stuff, you'd see that the, the mud has uh, settled. And what this is, book, I believe what the assignment of this um, equipment is to do is to lift out, as you can see, the dirt that has settled because we are coming into the rainy season here in Florida. It rained last night and we welcome it because it's been a while, it's dry. But we better get ready because you know what happens here in Florida? Inevitably, do your work in the morning because night in the afternoon, thunderstorm, plenty rain. And so they are preparing for the rain. They're preparing for the overflow. There's actually a house on the, the left side of where this, box, this, this, this caterpillar is. Um, and I believe if they don't do this on a regular basis as needed, what we can have is a flooding. And so to prevent flooding and to allow the water access to go into the lake, to flow into the lake, they are in advance of what they expect to happen, dredging the lake. And I thought about the process of God preparing us to be creative, God preparing us to give birth, God preparing us to bring forth there is a need for a process and we need to become more comfortable. Yes, with, I'm okay, right. I was hoping the volume was off. <laughs> um, we need to become more comfortable with the process. All right, with the work that's required. And as I was thinking about my session, I was thinking, Lord, What's blocking me? What's blocking us? Hmm. Because if you created us in your image, in your likeness, if you stamp divinity on us and in us, which means that we are going to operate godlike and like our Father in heaven, like the Jamaicans would say, we go favor with Papa. And if we are going to favor our God, if we're going to resemble our God, that means we too would be able to call things and name things like Adam did. And if we're not doing that in the fullness of God, what God has called us to do, then we have to ask ourselves, maybe I need a buckle, maybe I need a caterpillar, maybe I need dredging, maybe I need excavating, maybe I need cleaning out, maybe I need a DNC, maybe I need a washout, maybe I need a flushing out, maybe there are things blocking woo, and preventing creativity. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, and you can freely turn to that passage. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, it's called an excavator. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, Jesus. In 1 Samuel 10, we have the story of 
King Saul being coronated as the first king of Israel. Now, you need to know that Saul had no intentions of but becoming king. But the people cried out for a king and God said, okay, um, I'm going to give you a king. Um, and God allowed Samuel, who was the priest and prophet, to identify Saul when he went looking for his father's donkey as the one, as the man that he God chose. So it's coronation day. Coronation day. The day when he's crowned king. And, and, and in England, uh, they just had coronation where they crowned King Charles III as king of England. He was, he was, he was called forth to now wear the crown and to rule in Israel over God's people in God's stead. To rule over God's people in God's stead. But I, I want you to look at, I, and I need to find the passage myself. <laughs> uh, if you have found it already, Sister Helen, let me know if you have. Um, First Samuel chapter 10. Yes, Apostle, I have. Verse 20. If you read verse 20 for me, Sister Helen, please. And when Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, the tribe of Benjamin was chosen by Lot. Go ahead. Then he brought the tribe of Benjamin nearby their families, and the family of Matri was chosen by Lot. And Saul, the son of Kish, was chosen by Lot. But when they looked for him, he could not be found. Pause. It is his coronation day. He had already been chosen by God to be the first king of Israel, to rule in God's stead. But on his coronation day, they couldn't find the man. He was MIA. He was missing in action. And so Samuel... The prophet, the, the priest who was going to anoint the king, the first king, was confused and a little puzzled. So he goes to God and asks, where is, you know, uh, so verse 22, verse 22, Sister Helen. So they inquired further of the Lord, has the man come here yet? And the Lord answered, he is there, hiding himself by the provisions and supplies. You got to hear it from the NIV. The NIV says, and the Lord said, yes, he has hidden himself among the baggage. Hidden beneath the baggage. Called to rule in God's stead. Called to wear the crown. But at the time of his coronation, he was hiding beneath the baggage. And I, I'm here to call somebody today out from behind that which has blocked your creativity. I'm here to call somebody today to come and rise above what the trauma, the negativity, and, and the, the issues of your past that have blocked you. This excavator, my good God Almighty, this, this, this caterpillar, this buckle, this whatever it is, whatever the right name it is, this is the work of God that is dredging and removing what has settled, my God, what has settled on you, but it doesn't belong on you. It has settled on you, but it's clogging up your channel. It is blocking up your channel. And I wanna ask you, my friends, what might be, I told you at the beginning, my mother offered to do, send me to, now I am like, oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. But here's what I said, it's too hard. Question, what have you told yourself about creativity? What have you said openly with your own mouth about your creativity? I am not creative. Oh, I can't do that. I find it really hard to do that. 
I think other people are so creative and I admire their creativity, but me, I am not. What have you with your own mouth spoken about your creativity that's blocking the flow? What has somebody else said about you? I, have, I grew up with one brother, even though I had many, I have many. I mean, and he, he sings well, really good, really good. I think it's tenor or bass, whichever. See how much I know. And he would say, bring the hymn book, bring the songbook. And we'd, he'd want us to sing in the house. And when I'm singing, I'm supposed to be keeping my part as a, as a, as a, as a soprano, but I'm singing something like on his side. And he's like, man, if you sing for your dinner, you won't even get snack. See how helpful that is? Somebody right there telling me you can't sing. And then as if that wasn't bad enough, when I went to Bible school and I tried to join the choir, I didn't, I didn't make the um, re re recital, uh, what they call it again? The, oh, when you're trying out for, for a part, what is it called again? What's the word? It's not coming to me. Didn't make the cut. Didn't make the cut, but there's a word I'm looking for. Um, audition. Hmm? Audition. Audition, thank you. I didn't make the audition. And then even music, I went to one music class and I couldn't keep the rhythm, I was out. Um, and so even in Bible school in my third year, I think I did voice mess lesson and everybody laughed. And like, Sanjay, why are you wasting your money? Why are you wasting your money doing voice lessons? So imagine being told by others that you are not what you're aspiring to be. Imagine you telling yourself that you can't do it because it's too hard. Imagine the enemy of your soul, the opponent of purpose and destiny, whispering in your ears that you are not good enough, that you don't belong in the creative league, that other people need to be admired and you need to cheer them on. I'm here to deal with that today. That's my assignment. This is my assignment. I've come with, with a divine caterpillar excavator to dredge out, to clean out, and to remove that which has settled in your channel and preventing the flow of creativity. Somebody on Facebook, invite somebody to watch because too many of us think we're not creative. Uh, you, you who are here with me live, it's supposed to be interactive, so I'm gonna let you speak. I'm like, what is it you have told yourself? What is your story? I told you some of my story. What is your story regarding creativity? Anybody has a story of their own? I'd love to hear. What is your story? You have to unmute and talk. <laughs> Ooh, I have some people on Zoom who don't understand. They're here to speak. <laughs> you've been, you've oh. been unmuted. <laughs> <laughs> the whole idea why you're in the room is to is to engage with me, right? Praise you, uh -huh. Jesus. All righty, I'm still on the road. Okay, so you're still on the road, but do you have any story to tell? Yes, sister, very, sister creative. Uh huh. Yeah, it's very like um yourself actually, and it is a piano one. So it was an evening service, and my husband was moderating the service, and we didn't have any musicians in the church that night, and so I thought I'd help out. And I had just a few piano lessons as a child and I can carry, I know the keys and I know all of that. And so I just offered myself because I'm like, I'm a good brownie and I like to lend a hand. And um, we were singing and then he, he looked over and gently said, um, I think we'll do it without music today. And I, it absolutely crushed me <laughs> because it, especially because it was coming from him. And, and I remember I blushed and I got up and I, I wasn't angry or hurt, but it just, I just felt a little bit, ooh, ouch. And so since then, I've not really been that confident. And Apostle knows that when I've visited sometimes, I've done a little bit to try and help, but I'm doing it with such a, so tense because I can still hear those words. And I've never forgotten them. And so it does block me flowing naturally. Mm -hmm. because yeah so a fear kick, yeah. kick, and i would love that to be removed i really would all right that's 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 the work god wants to do the excavator is coming after you anybody else has a story to tell 
I do, Apostle. As a very young student in school, I was disappointed. I was hurt when I drew a dog and the teacher came up to me and asked me about the cow that I just drew. <laughs> it was like, okay, that's it. I won't draw again. I, wow. I won't be misunderstood. Wow. But fortunately, <laughs> now that was, you know, first couple of years of, of school. Fortunately, I became a primary school teacher. And I remembered that and did not dampen anyone else's creativity. So I would ask them, so tell me about your picture. That's good. That's good. Wow. Wow. So be careful, parents, guardians, how you speak to the little ones. Um, uh, there's a little girl in my church who came up to me and I still have the picture in my office. And I said to her, what is it? She said, it's, it's a unicorn. I said, okay. And, and you know, you, you can't, you, 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 can, you can do damage. We can do damage by frowning on what a child creates or someone creates. And so we want to be careful. And maybe you might need to reach back if you're a parent or guardian and you, you probably didn't praise the, the sketch that didn't have any formation that you couldn't make sense of. But that child heard a message that perhaps needs to be removed from their spirit. Anybody else has a story to tell? And if you're on Facebook, share, share in the comment section a story maybe uh, of how you too have to now deal with something you told yourself Something somebody has told you or some, some lie the enemy has been speaking to you. Um, and we want, one of the things we said last night that I want to re-echo is that um, our create, just like we're unique, how our creativity flows is also unique. So my friend, Molly and Grease, is extremely creative in, in, in multi-layers, in multi-dimensional ways. So she is a professional designer. If you've seen the things she's made for me over the years, that she does. And she comes from England and she spends a week or two, but in three days, the outfit is ready. Perfect. She is good at creating cards. She's good at creating um, banners and flags and designing and decorating. She's good at writing. She's very prolific with words. Um, she's good at dressing. It's like the thing she does. I'm like, this morning she had a wrap and she said she did it in a minute time. I'm like, she's just, she's just got loaded. She got, she got a Joseph's coat. Some of us got one dimension of the coat. But God doesn't want you to look at the one dimension and look down on, on it. Because you know, the parable of the sower, not the sower, sorry, of the, the talent, the one who got the one talent, he, he got a whipping for burying the one talent. And Sister Dawn, in Sunday school, we sang some lies and some undoctrinal stuff. One talent have I to take to the sky. Wait a minute. Why are you taking the talent to the sky? The talent is to be invested. The talent is to be poured out. The talent is to be multiplied. God doesn't want you to bring back to him what he gave to you to invest in the earth. So Lord, forgive the ones who created these songs and made these songs. They meant well, but we sang a lot of foolishness years ago. Please don't sing them anymore. Because you need to look at what you're singing and singing that over and over. And you walk away saying, I'm going to keep this one talent and I'm going to take it back to Jesus. And he's like, really? I don't need it up here. I needed it to work down there. So what God has given you is designed to be used here. 
All right. Any any story before I move on? Any other story? I thought, I thought I didn't have a story, but I do have a story. I love I love singing. I love to sing. But when we used to sing at home, my sisters and my brothers would tell me I can't turn a tune in a bucket. <laughs> wow. But I love singing. I know. I know. I know. It's it's painful to have you, the people who are closest to you tell you certain things and you you believe them, right? You believe them, and next thing you know, you tell yourself what they tell you. But you know what? A joyful noise unto the Lord is what you're required to, to tell. Somebody said, I was being told I was not university material, and I belong in community college. And today, she is a registered nurse. Bless you, my dear. Listen, we're going to refute the lies of the enemy. So, Wow. I, I want to talk about this book that I wrote. Uh, what? Nine years ago? 2014, nine years ago. Um, believe it or not. And I'm supposed to be writing more. So Lord, y'all stretch your hands towards me and say, Lord, let her be unblocked in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm not telling you something that I'm not speaking over myself. Because sometimes we think, okay, because I have done this, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Because to whom more, much is given, much is required. So I know I'm one of those who have been, who, who have been given much, who has been given much. And I, I know God is going to call me out and say, what have you done with the many gifts that I've given you? Ouch. I felt that Lord. So. I want to tell you how Unmuted came to be because God has jokes. God is funny, y'all. God has a sense of humor. I first heard that I'm supposed to write in the year 1997. That book is yet to be written, that particular book. I had gone to New Jersey and spoke at a church uh, for a few nights on singleness. I am still single, by the way. So maybe, maybe I need to write the book so I can, can cancel out this singlehood or something. I don't know. I don't know if there's a connection. <laughs> but anyway, the bishop said to me, and the bishop has not gone to heaven. So Lord have mercy. He's looking down from the back and he's going to say, hey, what happened to the word? He wrote on a note after I was done and he said, Pastor Valentine, I believe what you've just shared needs to be written. That was, that was um, early in 1997. Later that year, I went to a conference in New York. They had a presbytery, a prophetic presbytery. They called out all the ministers to stand first and, and the prophets began to prophesy. This seasoned prophet who still has a big church, large church in New Jersey, David Ireland said, write the book. My God, you didn't have to shout at me. And I'm yet to write that book. So Lord, y'all stretch your hands again, please. But I always knew I'm supposed to be writing. So yeah, I started, by the way. I started, I have actually several manuscripts. So somebody need to just come alongside me and say, I've been called by God to help you push these babies out because the world needs what's it within you, all right? So pray for midwives to come alongside me. In the, and I'm so serious. So anyway, um, I'm supposed to write, and I, know, I, know, I knew that, I've known that, and I've echoed that over and over to myself. But what I didn't know is that my first book would be a book of poetry. So that's where the funny part comes in, because I don't consider myself a poet. So, I still remember, I'm in Galleon. Wait, what's the beach nearest to where you come from in, in New English Harbor? Galleon Beach, Galleon. You're muted, Dawn. You're muted, sis. Galleon Beach, yes. Galleon Beach. I still remember it was in that beach. Desri, my spiritual daughter and I are in the water. And Desri, I don't even know what we were saying before, but she said to me, oh, maybe your first book is going to be a book of inspirational poetry. Number one. Number two, one day my sister Heather and I are talking and she said, perhaps one day your first book, your book, one, perhaps one day you write a book of inspirational poetry. 
I don't remember if exactly those lines, but similar words. Number two. Number three, I'm, I'm doing my degree in psychology and I elected to do this course on play therapy. I didn't have to, but I chose to because I am by now understanding I'm creative and God is creative and he uses all kinds of ways to get to our hearts and to heal us. So I'm doing the course. One of the assignment is journal each after each class, what happened in class. And as I am journaling, my, my, my homework becomes poetry. So I would submit what I wrote to my teacher. And she's like, hmm, when you write your first book, I would like to have a copy. Okay, number three. I go to Greece with my class for multicultural class. And we decided, they decided each year they were gonna take the class, you know, those who wanted to go. And I, I'm so glad I made that investment in my life and journey. And each of us had to present on a, a, a culture group, a multicultural group that we were either drawn to or connected with. And I cho chose to do my presentation on clergy, clergy women, all women in ministry. And I dressed apart. And, and while I'm in Greece, I promise you, the, the, the thought came to me, I'm on the plane and I'm sketching, I'm writing, I'm jotting down um, what is in my heart and how I want to end my presentation. And um, I remember we had an outing and I was on the, the train writing this piece. And I remember when I was done, presenting what I'm about to read to you. My professor, Andrea, who is now Cunard, Andrea said, you have a talent there. What are you doing with it? Hmm. This is the piece. Don't judge me. Don't judge me from where you stand saying, oh no, she's a woman. You've read the text, yes, all out of context to substantiate your pretext in attempt to refute my prefix. I'm a woman. Yes, I'm a woman. The call of God upon my life is the only reason for this parody. I'm not a feminist. <laughs> I'm undeniably feminine. I am not usurping authority. I have been endowed with authority. I'm not an afterthought. I am God's forethought. I'm not doing this because a man resists. I am doing this because God insists. I know you throw scriptures around saying I'm out of my league, but read again before you proceed. Wasn't Deborah a judge, a ruling in Israel? Esther as God's choice, not just as a queen, but a deliverer indeed? Oh, and Phoebe, Junia, Priscilla, Tryphena, and Tryphosa, women all who heeded the call. But listen, my friend, Please listen well. When you tell me to be silent, ignoring the cultural context, remember, Jesus was born of ordinary descent. Read his genealogy in the first chapter of Matthew again. Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob the 12 tribes of Israel. A closer look at verse 16 will reveal it was through Mary, a woman, that God brought forth his seed. So if God, who is all wise, chose not to disguise that a woman is worthy to bring forth his son. Would he not release a woman to speak forth his word? When tempted to judge, request an in camera, a moment with the judge, raise an objection and ask God if you must. How could you, so, being so wise and omniscient, put your anointing upon a woman? Now render your verdict upon the evidence presented. Lay aside your prejudice. It's time for admission that the gift of the woman plays an integral part in fulfilling the Great Commission. I hope somebody's coming to the altar. Somebody who thinks that you don't have any right to preach and women aren't called to preach. You, I just gave you. I just gave you. When I, so when I was done presenting this, my, my professor said, you have a gift. What are you doing with it? And so I realized I had four voices saying positively, you have something in you regarding poetic expression. And so it is 2014. 
and I'm doing something I saw online about writing a book, writing a book in 30 days. So I signed up for the course and I'm doing the course. And in the midst of me doing the course, you got to follow the signs. Hint, follow the signs. In the midst of me doing the course, a friend in Houston, Teresa, sends me a book and said, I thought of you. And it's, it's some tiny books, a, a series by, by Charles Cups, I think. And she said, I, 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 I somehow feel like this might be what you're supposed to be doing, capsules. I'm like, really, really God? I, I was done for. I, by the time she, yeah, I was like, okay. So guess what? I'm going to do this book. And some of you might think I sat down and just started to write. That's not how it works. You got to collect information. So this is a journal. This is my last, this is my most current journal, a gift. You, you never go wrong in buying me a journal. Oh yeah, buy me journals. So <laughs> I want you to know that what I did is that I went through my journals and I pulled out pieces and I tweaked them. I made them applicable so that you could read them and, and, and engage with them and, and, and connect with them. But many of these are written for my own journey, my own story, for my own, for my own experiences. I wrote the book but they were scattered in many different journals. And I just had to now go collect them, call them in, bring them in and put them together. My good friend, George, bless his heart. Hesse, who's now in heaven. These are people who sat with me and helped me to type and edit and Sister Helen is on. She was living in St. Thomas at the time, but I sent my manuscript. She's an English teacher and she can find where Doc needs to be, I promise you. And so she helped in editing the book. And the very teacher, the very professor who said, when you write your book of inspirational poetry, wrote the foreword, Dr. Monse. And I... I'm going to invite Sister Helen to engage a little bit because I know there's a piece from the book that means a lot to you. If you have not yet had a, your hand on this book, I promise you, you want to because this book was birthed not because I felt confident, not because I felt called to even write poetry, not because I felt gifted to write poetry, not because I, I have this real wonderful ability to with words. I do it well in speaking, I think, but sometimes I struggle in writing it. And, and God would say, you're going to do this as an example to others because people are going to need to know you fought intimidation. You ward off the voice of intimidation. I heard literally in my head, what stripping is this be? People go and say, foolishness. True poets are going to look at this and laugh. Nobody's going to take this seriously. But I knew I had an assignment and God had confirmed over and over and over again. And so I had to make room for my coronation day. I had to make room. I had to come from beneath the baggage and the lies of the enemy to produce this book. The reason I wanted you to hear my story is because I know you need to be unmuted and your creativity needs to be unleashed. There are some stories to tell about this book and we're gonna tell them. Go on, Sister Helen, because you, you've been a champion of this book from day one. You helped edit it, you sold many copies and you're forever telling people. Yes, go ahead, share with us. I will always be a cheerleader for you and your writing apostle. This, I would say, is not an ordinary book of poet poetry, which I love. But because it doesn't belong on your shelf just to gather dust. Mm, mm. Anytime I give it as a gift, which I love to do, I mentioned that I have used it as a devotional because I would never say read it from one cover to the other and put it down. 
I know it wasn't meant for that. And I certainly don't use it for that myself either. Sister Helen, before you go on, mm -hmm. as you said, devotional, my sister, I have many sisters, by the way, the blood one, but this, this is one in the blood of Jesus, sister. But we, there's a four of us that call ourselves a sisterhood. Lisa has two little ones. I believe there might be four and two. She has used my book with her little ones as a devotional. Like what? What? So if a mother could think that this could help her children. Wow. Go on, Sister Helen. There is compassion in these poems. There is an understanding of the pain of many who are going through a process. There, there is, is just, it's an empowerment, just mm -hmm. reading these. And not only are the poems there, but then there are um, scriptures that relate to it and other um, writers comments. But my all time favorite is called it. And the scripture that goes with that is from Psalm 147, three, he healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Mm. And a verse from Virginia Woolf, if you do not tell the truth about yourself, you cannot tell it about other people. So here is just a portion of it. Where have you pushed it? The abuse and a, encounter, rendezvous and experiment. What shall you name it? Or can you? Would that be to claim it? The shame to admit it. You've said you'd never share it. But how will you repair it? if you don't name it. It is generic, no label upon it. No one would ever hear it. You smile to disguise it, but the memories are there quite vivid and clear. So where have you placed it? If only you dare to share what you fight to hide, You'd find freedom and release with no more secrets to keep the message you preach. Your life would teach. Confession is for cleansing. The process of counseling is for healing. And that's not the entire passage, but it's, it's powerful. And if you don't have a copy, I would say buy at least two because once you get one, you're going to want to give one. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we, we, let's go ahead and tell you, you can get a copy today. Uh, we can put it in the mail for you. And listen, you can get it on Amazon, but listen, I don't get any money when you buy on Amazon. So I'm not one who like buy my book on Amazon because truthfully, and you probably could get it cheaper, but if you want to bless my life and ministry, buy it from me and we will... Um, get it to you. You will have it by next Friday. I'm, I'm convinced that if you say you want a copy of this book, um, so send us an email, send us a note, note uh, in, in the Sandra Valentine um, inbox, inbox us, and you'll get a copy, a signed copy. So give me your name as well. Yeah, your full name and address, and you'll get a signed copy of my book on Muted. Now, last night, my friend Molly hinted last night, and she said, but didn't that book help you too? So let me tell you one story. I am grieving, bleeding over a relationship that has gone awry. And I'm hurting. How many of you hurt over something that just, you know, just not right right now? You know, somebody you love, a friend, a, a sibling, a, 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 a whoever. So I call my, my prayer partner and I'm telling Lori about my bleeding. And she's supposed to just come alongside me and empathize and pray with me. She said, hold on. Literally. She said, hold on. I got to find 
what she did, naughty. So <laughs> she said, she said, hold on. And she came back. And what my friend began to do was to read from Unmuted. <laughs> Too funny. And she began to read. Let me share with you what she read. Ah, like Sister Helen said, there's a quote with each, almost each of the pieces. And this particular quote is by Washington Irving. It says, love is never lost. If not re re reciprocated, it will flow back and soften and purify the heart. The title of this piece is Love Weeps. Love Weeps? Whoever said that love will never hurt told a lie? I never knew, but I found it to be true. Your heart aches, breaks, spits into. For the love you gave, the vow you made ends abruptly. Your life's disrupted, your emotions fragmented, your mind demented, memories cemented in your heart, lamented, sometimes tormented, looking for an answer. Who pulled the trigger? Killing every dream you've lived for. The truth is, the answer, love weeps. You cannot love and not get hurt. You cannot ever give without realizing that what you gave was priceless anyway. So why are you expecting someone to repay? So keep it right. So keep right on. So keep right on loving and never stop giving. You'll find that in living with a heart that's forgiven, the pain is washed away for love sweeps. I started to laugh. I, I mean, I was no longer crying and moaning. When my friend read, I started to laugh. I said, no, you did not just use my own book to heal me. That is how powerful it is. There's another story I have. So I wrote this book and I told you the pieces are written at different stages of my life. And I just try to tweak them so that you could enter the story with me. So I'm in therapy several years ago. And the, the Friday after I left therapy, I was just in turmoil because if you've ever gone through the process of therapy, it gets worse before it gets better. Make sure you're ready. So I'm, I'm in agony at, over what I'm working through in therapy. And I texted my therapist and said, I'm having a rough time. I'm struggling. I, I know what I want to say, but I don't know how to articulate what I want to say. So I brought my book with me. And I pulled out what Sister Helen just wrote, wrote read, um, read. And as I, re I read that, she got up immediately and she came over to me. She said, you wrote that? She said, I want a copy right away and I want to pay for it. And then I was able to use what I read from my book, what I had written to be the bridge, to be really unmuted. That's the power of this book. And that's what God said to me. This is not about poetry and the style of poetry. This is about being inspired by me to communicate creatively to the hearts of my people who need also help in vocalizing and verbalizing because the subtitle for the book is Modern Day Psalms to Liberate Your Soul from the Bondage of Stifling Silence. My message in the earth realm is to bring people into freedom. That's what I have been anointed and graced to do. And so I go after my freedom because I want to be able to be authentic. When I tell you he's freed me, he can free you too. He's liberated me, he can liberate you too. He can flow through me creatively. He can flow through you. And don't let yourself, anyone else, or the devil tell you that you are not creative. This book has blessed life, lives, the stories I have heard. And I literally don't travel without unmuted because I use it as a track. I use it as a, 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 a business card. The people I have given unmuted to, I have been in planes and written it, given it to, to the flight attendant. The other day, one of the last times I traveled, I think, and the, 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 the gate, the person at the counter was so kind to me. I left and then I was like, no, you need to give her, I walked back and she was so thankful. So my book is in Rwanda. My book is in Ghana. My book is in England. My book is in Germany. My book is in France. My book is in all over the place because I believe it's a seed in the earth realm. I want to pray for somebody today. 
who feels blocked up, clogged up, who feels like, I, I believe I'm supposed to create something, but I am beneath the baggage, hidden, hiding, when it's my season, when it's my time to come for it. I don't know what the trauma is. I don't know what the trauma is. I don't know what the wound is. I don't know who, I don't know what the unresolved issue is. I don't know what is, has cluttered your soul. But my assignment today is to declutter, to excavate. Ah, my assignment today, let me show you again, for those of you who uh, need to see, let me show you again the imagery I saw as I walked to the lake today, down the lake from my house. They are dredging the lake. They are excavating. They're pulling up, pulling out what would clog it up because they're expecting rain. In the waiting room, we're expecting rain. In the waiting room, we're expecting a downpour. In the waiting room, we're expecting the Lord to cause an unleaching, an untapping, that which has been dormant, that which has been latent, that which has been underused, underdeveloped, because some of us need to say, the truth is I have been doing. Let it not be said I haven't done anything, but God is gonna require of us according to what we've been given. So when the one man who get, got two talents came up with what, four or five, he was blessed because he had, he had increased in accordance with his capacity and ability. But my God, if you got five and you came with four, he's gonna say, you haven't done, you haven't done, you haven't done completely, fully what I gave you to do. I, I live with that awareness that I'm going to stand before God one day. I, I want to hear, well done. I think some of us are going to hear, well, some of us are going to hear, done. I live to hear, well done. So I'm going to defy every voice in, in, in me, around me, that says, I'm not supposed to do this. I, I, don't, I don't belong in the room. I'm going to fight through the, the lies of the enemy. I'm going to deal with the clutter, internal clutter that prevents the flow and hogs up the flow, man, Jesus. For some of us, God is calling us to live a more disciplined life, a more structured life, a more orderly life. You think of people who are busy and have mega churches and mega ministries and they're pushing out things every minute how did they do that? Well, one, they have the staff, yes. But two, the discipline. So for me, I am, I am saying God may, caused me to become more disciplined, more structured. Serious writers will tell you it's a daily thing. It's not when you feel it. It's a daily thing. And I know the spaces and the places that inspire me. I need to get there. Because down the lake, I wrote some of this book down lake front. Are you hearing me? I have written, I have manuscripts I've written on the beach in Antigua. I know the space I need to be in. I need to go after those spaces again. I need to make time. I need to be intentional about what he's put in my hands. So what is in your hands? Could you just do this for me? Please, your hands everywhere, in Zoom, on Facebook, just do this. What's, look down and, and answer the question, what's in your hand? The widow woman was like, oh, all I have is a little bit of oil. What's in your hands? What's in your hand? Father? Can I talk, can I say something before you pray? Sure. Oh, I think I've shared about my accident that um, when the car hit me and I was told, well, the, my pastor first told me 
well, the nurse said, the nurse who was there, she said, from the time she saw my body, she knew that there was no life there. And she was the one who pulled me by my jacket from under the car and started um, chest compression. There was no pulse, there was no breath. And God, that night, they anointed my body with oil and they prayed and she did the compression. And it, it seemed to take a while before I could breathe. But she knew that I was going to be breathing because she heard the gurgling in my chest, even though there was a clot or something because the blood came out of my mouth. And um, he restored the breath into my lungs and he revived my heart and caused my heart to beat again. And I've been, I've been, I've been, I know that I lived for a purpose, but I could not. I, I searched my heart, I asked, and there seemed to be no answer. And then one day, I'm, I'm gonna take um, Minister Pope's word, the spirit of God, it had to be the spirit of God dropped into my spirit to be that intercessor. Cause I mean, I have the time because I don't work, but for some reason, I'm, I'm, I'm having a, a struggle there still. Um, I think I need a break too, because that is what I think that he wants me to do. But I am, um, I, 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 I don't even know how to put it into words. I got you. I hear you. So wherever you've been called to serve, whatever you've been called to pour out in the earth, that's where you're going to find the fight. That's where you're going to find the resistance. You want to know what the fight is about in your life? You want to know what the warfare is about in your life? It's about the calling, the birthright, the thing you're supposed to bring forth. Sharabaku Shata. Somebody lift your hands on Facebook, in the room where you are, on Zoom. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for sharing, Dawn. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We come to you today, Lord. We thank you that you have invested in us of yourself. You, you breathe into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. You poured of yourself into Adam and you've poured yourself into us. And God, you require of us that mm. we be found faithful, faithful stewards mm. of the glory we carry within. Oh, Rabbi Father, we repent of owning and identifying with the lies of the enemy. Yes, Jesus. We repent of agreeing with the lies of the enemy. Yes. We renounce the vows made, the words spoken. We revoke them now in the name of Jesus. And we will only say what you are saying. We would only speak what you are speaking. We would only come in agreement with what you have stamped within us. For the Bible says eternity has been etched within us. Therefore, we are yearning and longing to find fulfillment. Help us to be provoked to pursue purpose. Father, I declare right now the warfare the mental warfare, the warfare in the mind, the, 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 the thoughts projected from hell, the thoughts from wounds and trauma of our past, the thoughts that twirl in our minds. You said we can pull them down. They are strongholds. And I wish somebody would just reach up now and begin to symbolically pull down. Every stronghold in the name of Jesus. Destroy, annihilate, detonate. Woo, Jesus. Every faulty belief, every wrong paradigm 
We ask that you would clothe us with the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. You, you would help us, oh God, to think on what's beautiful and pure and, and, and holy and, and upright and true and authentic. Mm -hmm. We come in agreement with you, God. We come in agreement with your word, with your truth. We separate ourselves. We, we, we separate ourselves from every lie of the enemy, every pain of our past. For those who, God, perhaps didn't know better, but said things that cause our spirits to regress and retreat. We break those things off of us today. Amen. We call for the true self. Someone who was in my church years ago, who is a, an architect, said that in class, in school, he used to write tiny, tiny, tiny. And one day his teacher said to him, write big, use up the whole page. And he said something like anger came out of him. And he just started to just do what he was doing in a big way, in a loud way. And he's never turned back. You would be amazed that how you do what you do might be a clamp placed on you. Live out loud. Speak up when you need to. Sing and hear your own voice. Oh, dance like nobody's watching you. Be who God has called you to be. Be unshackled. Be unmuted. Be unleashed. Step out of every grave clothes now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Lazarus, you came forth, but you're still wrapped in grave clothes. You got saved, but you're still bound in grave clothes. You sing the songs of Zion. You preach the sermons, but you're still bound in grave clothes. You're still tethered. You're still hemmed in. You're still blocked in. You're still limited. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare every limit broken, every limitation mm -hmm. broken off of you. I declare even now over you, Sister Dawn, that you would freely flow in your gifting, that you'd freely flow in your calling. I declare every well that got stopped up, every well that got blocked up, in the name of Jesus, I speak release now over you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I hear the Lord say, for some, the release is going to come when you forgive. The release is going to come when you let go of the hurt. The release is going to come when you let go of people who have walked over you, looked over you, overlooked you, and basically used and discarded you. Let the hurt go. Let the bitterness go. Because in letting it go, you are going to open up the channels of your soul to be creative. Lord, thank you. Be released now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare fresh anointing upon you. I declare fresh grace upon you. Ah, somebody just lift your hands and declare these hands of mine were designed to create. Hallelujah. Oh, these hands of mine. I don't know what God is calling you to create. It might be creative writing. It might be poetry, but might, it might be baking. It might be making something special. I mean, let God use you. Let God flow through you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do the thing that comes to your mind. I challenge somebody who's listening today. You do it this week. Don't wait till next week because you need to break through whatever it is. Do it this week. Do something that comes to your mind that, that even now you might, you might be thinking, no, how am I going to do this? I, I don't have this. D do it. Find a creative way to do it this week because in doing this, you are literally stepping out of the boat. And as you step out of the boat, you're going to walk on water. You cannot walk on water. You will not walk on water if you don't step out of the boat. So this week, did you hear me? This prophet is telling you this week, the yes. thing that you sense you should do, do it this, do something about it this week. It may not be the fullness of it, but do something that, that jump starts the engine this week. Then number two, find somebody that will hold you accountable. 
connect with somebody who will hold you accountable and say, listen, I heard the word of the Lord. I have stepped out of the boat. I tend to regress. My default is to abandon the project when I get tired or when things are happening. I want you to hold me accountable. Would you do that? Would you check me, check in on me and to see how am I making progress in what I said to do? Tell somebody what you're doing. Put it out there so somebody can hold you accountable. Pray over this thing. Bring it back to God and say, Lord, breathe on it. Because if you bless my five loaves and two fishes, I will feed multitudes. I will feed multitudes. Yeah. Father, I bless your people. Thank you. I bless your people to flow with the creative grace you have given to each of us. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, glory to amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Father. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! I feel his grace. I feel his anointing. Oh, glory to God. Inbox me so you can get a copy. We will mail it to you. And guess what? It's the waiting room special. We will pay for the postage. $10 is for the book. We'll pay for the postage. This is your waiting room special. US only, please. Uh, so if you're not in the US, we'll have to figure out. I do have some books uh, in Trinidad, Ella. So you, if you don't have a copy, I can tell you who in Trinidad can help you with a copy. But if you're in the US, we will pay for the postage. You send $10 via Cash App. The address is Borderless. Somebody put that in on Facebook for me, Borderless. The dollar sign, Borderless SVM. That is the um, Cash App address. Or you can send it to Zell at my Valley SP email, Valley, V-A-L-L-I-E. Somebody put it for me sp at msn.com or you can go to my facebook page there's a paypal link prefer not because paypal take a portion takes a portion but if that's how you can do it use paypal and send your money with your name and we will mail listen like sister helen said why don't you make it a gift to somebody else i promise you it's worth sharing with others i can tell you what people are saying about this book how it's changing their lives and helping them in their own healing journey. So in Trinidad, uh, if you know Bishop um, Hamilton, Bishop Don Hamilton, um, Sister Eller, that's where I would direct you. I know he should have some copies there. Um, all right, we are done for now. However, the waiting room continues tonight at 6 p.m. We are back here. Some of us are going to show up here on Zoom. Others are going to watch on Facebook. Uh, my friend Cynthia, she was so excited. She thought it was earlier. So she's in California and she's calling me seven o'clock this morning and trying to get ready. I'm like, no, sis, it's later. It's later. So she's like, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> but um, she's going to tell the story of how God uh, drew her into sign language, how she Lent, gave herself to the craft and literally was able to use sign in gospel music to minister God's word. That is what the waiting room was, is about. How will you use creativity to share God's love and share God's grace? I am excited about the rest of the waiting room because God has started off with like, whoo, how many of you said this is good? <laughs> it is. Good stuff. Thanks for being here on Zoom with me. It was good to have your presence here. And thanks for being with me on Facebook. Um, again, I upload these videos. Go to my Sandra Valentine Ministries YouTube channel. Share these and say to somebody, there is a 10-day waiting in the sacred space and you don't want to miss out. God bless you. And thanks for being here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ron.